Greetings and welcome. In this video, I will be walking you through how to build and run OSU Laser on Linux, specifically Ubuntu and other Debian based distros. So, the first thing we're going to need is .NET. And to get .NET on Linux, we'll need the .NET SDK from Microsoft's website. So, we can find that easily with an internet search. Um, and it should be right here at .net.microsoft.com slash download. Let me full screen this. Uh, let me enable some scripts. Okay. So here we'll want to go ahead and click on Linux. I'm sure you already have detected it. And we want the SDK to build apps. So we'll get the this one right here. So from here you just select your distribution. You know, if you use DB9, you can just copy and paste each command one by one. It's very easy. On Ubuntu, in my particular case, we'll just do the same sort of thing. So we'll open up our terminal. First of all, we need to get the, the key for Microsoft's verification. And we'll add that. Alright, now that we have that, we can make sure that we have the repository for Universe. It's already enabled for my system, and make sure that you also have app transport HTTPS. Looks like I have not installed it yet, since this is a fresh installation of Kubuntu. So, got that all set up, easy. We can go ahead and update. Oops. And last but not least, install the SDK. Alrighty, now that we have Microsoft's .NET Core SDK installed, let's go ahead and quickly test it to make sure it's up and running. Okay, that looks good. Now we'll want to download a program called Git, which will help us fetch the source code of osu. So that's as simple as sudo apt install git. Okay, looks like I already have it. Uh, you can go ahead and do that. It'll cost you at most a few minutes. Once you have that up and running, let's go ahead and hop over to the home page of osu on github. So that would be github.com slash ppy slash osu. Right over here under the clone or download button, you can go ahead and copy this link. And back in terminal, you can go ahead and type git clone recurse submodules. And then go ahead and paste that link. So what this will do is it'll fetch the source code from GitHub and all of its dependencies and clone them into your home folder into a folder called osu. So once this is all done and finished, we can move on to the next step. Okie dokie. Now that we have the source code of OSU, we can go ahead and build the thing. And thankfully we have a nifty little all-in-one command to do just that. So here it is. You can go ahead and copy that. Before we paste it in, make sure you're, you are in the OSU folder. So CD OSU from your home folder. So here we are. You can go ahead and paste that. Uh, before, like real quick, before I actually start this whole process, I want to make sure you are aware of a bug slash quirk that you will run into at least at the uh, time of this recording. So, long story short, when .NET finishes the whole building process, when it actually tries to run OSU, uh, it will run into a problem where it cannot find two files one called base.so and the other called base underscore fx.so, I'm pretty sure. Uh, the workaround I'll show you later when we get there. It basically just involves moving those files to another folder. Just manually, it's, it's no big deal. So with that said, you can go ahead and enter in this command 
and keep in mind that it will take a long time depending on your internet connection and your CPU core count. So for this computer I've only allocated four cores and a limited connection so it may take for at least me, I'm estimating it may take around 15 to 30 minutes um, at best, so your mileage may vary. There won't be much output while this command is running, like you can see right now it's blank as it's restoring packages. Uh, it's not going to tell you what's going on much because, you know, it's Microsoft. But once that it's, it's actually finished, it will... Um, you know the the screen will run through a whole bunch of text and it'll show you the error and then it'll give you back to your command line uh, once we're there I will show you the workaround to prevent that so for now we wait and we're back as you can see we're just left with a bunch of gibberish so let's now try to apply that workaround I mentioned earlier to prevent that from happening next time so you can go ahead and open up your file manager and navigate to your home folder. There's the project folder for OSU. In there we'll select OSU desktop, bin, debug, and netcore app. And here are the two files in question. These will be the ones that we'll need to copy to .NET installation directory somewhere in the share directory. I'll figure it out. Um, so we'll do that real quick on the command line. And we'll need sudo since we're going to copy to a protected folder. So sudo cp for copy. And just type the uh, directory here. So that would be your home folder. osu bin, or not bin, osu.desktop bin debug. And then netcore app. Okay, so then we do these little curly brackets. We can copy the two files at once. Start with libbase.so and then put a comma and then type libbase underscore fx.so and curly bracket. So now we'll type the destination, which if I remember correct or, uh, correctly, it is in the user share.net. What's in here? Um, is it in Microsoft? Oh no, it's in the shared. Wait, wait, hold on. .NET shared. That's right. Okay. And then Microsoft. We'll want the uh, which one? Netcore app. And then um, the latest version that you have, uh, as you thing I should quickly note, uh, mention as well. As you're updating OSU Laser, you may encounter a new version of Microsoft.net, and you'll just have to do this for the new version each time, so just keep that in mind down the road. So in here, um, yeah, we'll just want to copy in there, so do that. Alright, that's done. So let's re-enter the dot net run command and let's see if it works looking good so far hey there we go so here is the osu laser window it's booting up I'm not actually going to show gameplay because as you can see uh, it's, it's really really laggy and that's because I am running this on a VM so I don't have the graphical capabilities that I would have on my host PC so, as you can see, you probably hear the audio. Um, I'm going to show some gameplay real quick on my host machine, so let's hop over there. Hello, and welcome to my host system. So let's say you want to take the obvious first step after getting OC Laser up and running. You want to install a beatmap. Right, so here I have Dragon Force through the Fire and Flames OC. So I'm going to show you how to do this with the command line. I'm pretty sure some desktop environments let you do this by directly dragging and dropping the OSC into the OC laser window, but here's how I do it. So you could just start off by CDing into your OC directory, and from here you just want to paste that command, the .NET run command from before, 
And for the, this little thing, I'm going to explain this in the next bit. Uh, for now, just ignore that. You don't need it right now. So af after the command, uh, put a space and then paste the directory where your OSC files are located. So you can have as many as you want. For now, I'm just going to use the one. So let me show you how I do it. So just type the, the full directory to your bitmap file. And if you want to do all OSCs, you can just do asterisk.osc and that, and that acts as a wild card, so it'll activate all of them at once. But for me, I'm just going to do one, so here we go. And that'll do it. So it spelled out the whole name right there, as you can see. So you can just press enter, and it should, um, once it builds and runs, it'll add the bitmap as a secondary task along with it. So we should pop up with a little notification here. Maybe or maybe not. Maybe not. But let's check to see if it actually added or not, because it looks like it disappeared from my desktop. And when you know, there it is. Okay, so that's how you add beatmaps. Pretty easy. Uh, I'll have all the commands in the description. Uh, while we're here, why not we give some a bit of gameplay footage so you know sort of how it plays on Linux. It's actually very smooth once you get it in full screen and all that. This is kind of a longer map, so it takes a bit to load at the beginning. But overall, it's extremely smooth and satisfying to play. It's way better than running stable OSU with wine, that's for sure. I mean, I'm sure OSU Laser still has a ways to go in terms of performance. Uh, there's a little tweak you can do to get a little bit more performance. That's what I'm going to show you in a little bit. So, all right, you've seen enough. Let's uh, go ahead and explain to you what exactly this part here does. All right, so essentially what you do is you just paste the original command, go ahead and add a dash C capital R release. And what this thing here at the end will do is it will tailor your build to be, instead of a debug oriented build, it'll be a more performance friendly, release friendly kind of polished build, right? So encoding this is what you do when you're, you know, you, you, you get to a landmark with your program or whatever and you're ready to send it out into the world, you give people the release build, not the debug build. And that's because generally, or at least with this instance, you will get a lot more performance uh, just a generally smoother, player-friendly experience when you use the release build for OSU Laser. So if you're not going to be a, you know, an active developer in OSU Laser, I highly recommend you as a rule of thumb just to stick to this instead of, you know, without it. So with that said, you should be pretty much good to go from here on out. I think I've just about covered all the basics when it comes to running Laser on Linux. So go ahead and enjoy the low latency and beautiful performance that Linux has to offer, because at this point it's pretty hard to promise that Windows will be around forever. So as for now, thank you for watching, and take care.